to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Gratitude and thanksgiving is predicated on three, three things basically. Number one, a recognition of help that is beyond the capacity of the recipient the foundation for thanksgiving is a recognition that you have obtained help from a source that is higher than you are we together now you do not need to give thanks if you are the one who is the doer nobody thanks himself you have to thank another influence that is other than you who was able to provide help that you could not provide so that is the first um, foundation for thanksgiving, the recognition that this result, this advancement, this progress in my life, even though it has happened, it is the coordinated effort of many people and many systems outside of my influence in many regards. If you do not realize that you are limited by yourself and that the results that you produce are not necessarily a true reflection of your ability. They are a reflection of the mercy of God added to your ability. So that recognition that I was assisted by a source higher and greater than me puts you in a position where you give thanks. Number two, thanksgiving is also built on the understanding. Listen carefully. Thanksgiving is built on the understanding that the privilege that you enjoy is not a privilege that everybody has. For instance, the privilege of life. For instance, the privilege of health. When you understand and you recognize that some of these gifts and blessings that we trivialize, like life, like health, like wisdom, like advancement, like a good family, not everybody has had the privilege to enjoy that blessing. It sponsors Thanksgiving hallelujah by reason of what i do i have the opportunity to pray for people all the time and especially for people who are sick and downcast and sometimes i'm broken myself to see the kinds of situations that people go through are we together one time i remember praying for someone who had i think he had a fracture very major fracture and you know um, they attended to the legs but he told me that he had to hang that leg for three months 90 days except adjusted by the doctors so he would hang there and I said how do you sit in one place for 90 days now when you recognize that to walk is a blessing and a gift are we together the, the gift of health the gift of longevity then it sponsors thanksgiving number three Generally speaking, thanksgiving is the key for more of anything. The moment you celebrate God or you celebrate men and thank them sincerely for what they have done, thanksgiving sustains the unique character of making um, the person who, who gave the benevolence to do more. Are we together? Every time you celebrate people, every time you acknowledge God for what he has done, that thanksgiving sustains the ability to sponsor more of that result in your life. That means if you find out that you, you are experiencing certain levels of ups and then downs, ups and then downs, the answer could be that you are not apt to be grateful. You find out that people enjoy certain levels of the lifting and the mercy of God and then for a very long time, they don't seem to see the hand of God again. It is because many times we are not careful and we are not intentional to acknowledge God. Are we blessed so far? The second thing I want to say is that gratitude, please listen. 
gratitude must be communicated in a way that the recipient of that acknowledgement must perceive that you are really grateful otherwise it is not gratitude let me give you an instance if i give you 10 naira and you say thanks and i give you 1000 and you say thanks and i give you 1 million and you say thanks and i give you 10 million and you say thanks you see there is a problem there because the sacrifice that comes into giving 10 million is not the same sacrifice that comes to giving 10 naira so i expect the communication of your gratitude to match the sacrifice that went into communicating that benevolence are we together now so if god blesses you and honors you and all you say is in one minute lord thank you and you think it's done for life same thing for health same thing for wisdom same thing you are not giving thanks the goal of thanksgiving is to make the person who has helped you to recognize how grateful you are and until they receive that perception you do not stop have you seen people thank you in a way that they just come and maybe lie down or prostrate and sometimes you are embarrassed in as much as you know that what you have done is great and worthy of commendation you didn't expect they would go so far and then by the next day they say thank you again and then after two weeks they say thank you most likely you will do good to them again is that true but someone who you help in such a lavish way and he just carelessly maybe after two or three days oh i forgot thanks chances are that you may not be apt to help them again this is how it is with god there are people who have mastered the art of thanksgiving it is difficult for them to be barren in any area for the slightest show of the hand of god they will worship and thank god in a way you would think god gave them a jet and gave them a house and you ask them why exactly are you happy and he says my children went to school and came back safely and to us we may think that is what what in the world should that warrant this level of lavish thanksgiving this was the secret of david one of the secrets that made him a man after god's heart remember when the ark was being restored to jerusalem the bible says david danced and rejoiced and celebrated to a point where his wife said look you are being too undignified you are you are compromising on the ethics of royalty and he said i'm rejoicing before the lord who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me the bible records that she died barren are we together thanksgiving generally grateful people are never stranded because they will always easily find help the bible says oh that man so provided you are a man you are mandated to praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works even to the children of men in first thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 18 particularly first thessalonians chapter 5 apostle paul again is admonishing the church in thessalonica and he said to give thanks in all things he says for this is the will of god the condition is not necessarily the will of god the art of consistent thanksgiving he says in everything give thanks how many things everything now let me tell you this it is very difficult to give thanks in everything because there are some things that are not favorable there are some things that do not warrant giving thanks i understand you giving thanks at the instance of something good a positive testimony a job promotion increase children health etc but the bible says in everything he never said in everything that is good he said in everything to give thanks that means it takes faith to be thankful because sometimes it does not make sense to be thankful are we blessed this morning and so i have two groups of people that i want to speak to as regards thanksgiving and gratitude group number one those who have found a reason to rejoice based on the wonderful things that have been done in their lives this is the first group i want to address this morning in truth there are people from january even till november you have seen the hand of god such display of benevolence and kindness and mercy and it is important that we give thanks 
in Psalm 1, the Lord in their trouble. And the Bible records that he delivered them out of their distress. The Bible says he led them forth by the right way that they might go into a city of habitation. It says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. He satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. The Bible says, Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being back. hallelujah thank you let's celebrate the technical team thank them very much we continue our reading verse 11 because they rebelled against the words of god and contempt the counsel of the most high the bible says therefore he brought down their heart with labor they fell down and there was none to help 12 the bible says verse 13 now then they cried unto the Lord. Notice that every time they cried, he responded. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distress. The Bible says he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. The Bible says, verse 15, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and caught the bars of iron in sunder fools the bible says because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted it says their soul abhorred all manner of meat and they draw near to the gates of death then they cry unto the lord in their trouble and he severed them out of their distresses he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction 21 says all oh, that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving so there is something called the sacrifice not just the declaration of thanksgiving there is the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his word his works with rejoicing it says they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters they see the works of the lord and his wonders in the deep 25 for he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves thereof they mount up to the heavens they go down again to the depths their soul is melted because of trouble 27 says they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end and then again they cry unto the lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses four more verses and we're done he maketh the storm to come now begin to read with understanding so that the waves are still he says then they are glad because they be quiet so he bringeth them to their desired heaven verse 31 says oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men let them exalt him in the congregation of the people there is a level of thanksgiving that goes beyond your home and your family it should be done in the congregation like we are celebrating today and then the bible says and praise him in the assembly of the elders praise the name of the lord i don't know about you but sometimes i feel guilty even asking god for anything in my life because i look at my life and my life is full of the testimony of the faithfulness and the goodness of God. Sometimes I almost feel evil to ever want to ask him for anything. Because there are many things in my life I did not ask for that he has brought. Does someone have that kind of testimony? The mercy of God from January to February. Some of us, even in the midst of the pandemic from last year to this year, as bad as it looks, it's been your most successful year always. It is the mercy and the faithfulness of God. We must be discerning to know and to see the things that God has done in our life. And we must be, be, be very apt to give thanks. The hymn writer says, count your blessings. And then it goes further to say, name them one by one. And it ends by saying, and it will surprise you 
what the Lord has done. If you are to name your blessings for health, for longevity, I think one of the most boisterous flights I've had in my entire life flying was this year was returning from a trip and it was a short trip and then it was raining and I don't know what happened I have never been in a plane that was shaking like you were bouncing a basketball I mean I said well Lord for me to leave Saburai Kabani Nina Gode Cheto do you know hold on salvation you said sheto do you know salvation is a blessing no matter what you have in this life it will only last year someday whether we like it or not jesus christ is returning and according to the authority of scripture there are people who will not go it's sad and painful but there are people who will not make it for rejecting jesus so the fact that you were able to be a recipient of the gospel that god opened your eyes to see this act of benevolence of jesus he said i lay me down to sleep and i wait for the lord sustain me did the bible not say except the lord builds a house it says they labor in vain that build except the lord watches over a city he says the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night do you not see that happen to nigerians people wake up very early in the morning helter skelter and return late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but the bible says he giveth his beloved sleep if god has done anything in your life that is worth thanking him for obvious results you have five six children and all of them are born again and well behaved it is a real miracle especially in our world today count it as a miracle and a half are we together now god granted you grace you're rising in your job sustaining you blessing you that you have bread on your table it is something to be thankful for and then there are a number of us that have had notable testimonies this year is that true magnificent displays of the kindness and the grace of god someone please shout after me say thank you jesus thank you. say it with understanding say thank you, jesus. thank you jesus so this is the first group i'm speaking to those who have seen the faithfulness of god in a manifest dimension i am part of that group truly god has been good very very good to me you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well jesus you have You have done me well. The faithfulness of God. There are people who became joyful mothers of children this year. There are people who were saved from the sword and the edge of death. People escaped terrorists this year. People escaped herdsmen this year. The road that you passed, you saw dead bodies and yet you passed the faithfulness of God. One more time, say thank you, Jesus. Very quickly, the second category of people that I'll be speaking to are men and women here seated and following who seem to not have a reason to be thankful. In truth, there are people who have been challenged. For others, it's been arguably the worst year for them from a human standpoint. And I have a message for you also. Habakkuk chapter 3. We'll begin our reading from verse 7. Habakkuk 
chapter 3. Please turn your Bible, if you will, to Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. Are you there? Verse 17. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 17. Here's what it says. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, hmm, neither shall fruit be in the... Praise the name of the Lord. Let's try it again. It says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. And sometimes painfully, the labor of the olive shall fail. It says, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. This right here may be someone's testimony that I did everything this year. But it seems nothing worked i thought i would be happy but it seems all that i had from january till november is sorrow sadly many people lost loved ones this year is that true others lost opportunities others right now are managing uh, a deteriorating health condition and i tell you the truth in the midst of pain it is difficult to see the faithfulness of god are we together the next verse there says yet yet means in spite of yet i will rejoice in the lord not necessarily in my situation but i will rejoice in the lord it says i will joy in the god of my salvation 19 says the lord god is my strength and he will make my feet like hind's feet he will make me to walk upon mine high places but i will rejoice very powerful scripture I've had the opportunity to pray with families trusting God for miracles and sometimes it's very painful as a man of God when you pray and agree with families over an issue and then it does not turn out as desired. I've prayed for a few people trusting God for life, trusting God for restoration of health and sometimes they call me and they say, Apostle, sadly, the person passed away. I was in South Africa a few weeks ago to preach for a dear friend wonderful family we built a very strong relationship and it was in a very uncomfortable time but i did it to honor the lord and to honor our relationship and the wife had battled cancer for a while and it's been managed you know very strong woman of faith and um, while i was there we had the opportunity to just share together in fellowship and break bread and i didn't know that would be our last supper hallelujah as i returned back to the country exactly one week he left for zambia for administration and she called him and said i'm not sure you will meet me i may not make it and he pleaded with her he said please just hold on and allow me come back let me see your face one last time as my wife and the mother of my children before you pass sadly by the time he arrived she had gone into coma and from then she passed on and so calling this man you can imagine I, I i felt that pain in my heart and i said sir do you still believe the lord and he said absolutely minister to you in a very deep way job chapter 1 and then verse 20 we're wrapping up very very powerful scripture i lift my hands to honor you because your word is true i lift my voice to honor you because your word is true i will sing the book of job is a very interesting book because it starts by telling us a man who was the wealthiest in the east and then the bible says he was a man that feared god and eschewed evil then the bible says on a certain day something tragic happened in one day a man would have people come back to back bringing reports just to let you know that all your children sons and daughters alike have fallen by the sword just to let you know that your cattle your animals your investments everything 
fallen by the sword just to let you know that everything has happened verse 20 let this be a lesson for someone tonight who may be offended in the lord and you're saying lord but i've served you and i've given my best i have given into the missions i have served you here's what the bible says when job heard all of this news the bible says job arose and rent his garment and shaved his bed job fell upon the ground let's finish that scripture together and worship. how do you worship in the midst of such a news all your children dead your investments gone the bible says job worshiped and the next verse says please give it to us verse 21 now naked came out i out of my mother's womb and naked shall i return thither the lord gave and the lord hath taken away he says blessed be the name of the lord next verse which is very instructive it says and in all these in all the tragedies in all the negative news the bible says job sin not nor charge god foolishly there might be someone who came to church today you had to literally drag yourself i'm just doing this so people don't ask me why didn't you come to church today i bring you a word of hope there is hope for the living are we together and there are times that you can rejoice in the god of your salvation the one who is able to save in every man's life sadly there are times that are called the days of adversity moments that are not desired by anyone moments that bring pain moments that bring tragedy moments of seeming sadness moments of disappointment but the bible tells us that at such times you must be able to draw strength and still say thank you jesus for so for this group of people can we join them as again you say thank you jesus and the devil will say for what and let me answer you you are the reason why it was not worse than it was thank you jesus for the fact that even though i seem to have had a deteriorating health condition that i am alive to even see this day thank you jesus when you live a thankful and a grateful life when you live a life of joy a life of peace then you will not only secure your blessings you will be able to triumph over seasons of pain you see life works like seasons in nigeria as we know uh we have rainy season and dry season right about now in many regions especially from the middle belt down the north is what we know to be dry season the absence of rain it can be dusty it can be cold it can be very very inconveniencing but every time please listen to me every time you see a dry season in your life a dry season always comes with a letter from the rainy season i am returning and every time you see a rainy season a rainy season always comes with a letter from a dry season that i may be here when you master the fact that seasons change it is only god that does not change and so you make up your mind that regardless the seasons i will remain thankful it is our intention that our lives continue to be an effulgence of positive testimonies but sadly in many regards either in your life or in that of those around you you may find occasions like someone may be having now where you may not have any logical reason to rejoice even so it is profitable to be thankful hallelujah is it all right if whilst you are seated you bow your head in prayer and find one at least one genuine reason to say thank you go ahead thank him let me give you a few reasons to thank him thank him for life thank him for health thank him for grace go ahead and say thank you thank you Jesus thank you in my life be glorified be glorified you're praying now in my life be glorified be glorified you 
get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, you get the praise, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life. Somebody say thank you Jesus Thank you for my children Thank you for my business Thank you for my salvation Be glorified Keep praying, don't be tired. Oh, I'm grateful, Father. And for everyone here who does not seem to have a reason, you may be in tears for some of you, but can you say thank you, Jesus? I lost a loved one, but thank God that I'm alive today to be an extension of their legacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I may seem to have lost my job or not gotten a job, but I thank you. I was thinking by now I would have children, but I'm still a mother in waiting. Thank you. Thank you from the depth of your heart. My children may not seem to have turned out the way I expected, but thank you because I know you are working. Somebody say thank you. Thank you for January, February, March. Thank you for April, May, and June. Thank you for July, August, September, October, November. Thank you for the privilege of life. Now we're praying one more prayer. Lord, let thanksgiving be my lifestyle from today please pray talk to the lord from the depth of your heart let it not just be when the church is having her annual thanksgiving ceremony let it be that you live your entire life being thankful for some of you you need to return back home and say thank you thank you thank you You need to return and say thank you. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as Sing it one more time with understanding. up 
I used to watch my parents do something that we were very, very annoyed with as kids. We had times of family prayer where we would come to pray and everyone would be having tons to pray. And we dreaded the times where my father or mom would be the ones to take over because they would spend more than 15 minutes saying all kinds of thank you. And as children, we wondered, summarize this and say, thank you, God, God knows. So my father would start by saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, literally, thank you. And now we open our eyes and close it back. What in the world is happening? Round up this prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then, Nagode, Nagode, Kai Sayabo, back to English. Thank you, thank you. And now we are watching, getting impatient, getting angry, getting frustrated. Thank you. Lord, what do we tell you? Thank you. And my mother is about to take the button. Thank you. Thank you. And then finally, in Jesus' name, then he gives my mother. Here's how my mother prays. Lord, the other day, when I passed the market and a car was almost hitting me, were you not the one who was there? She's praying and we're listening. And then, Lord, I was returning back. If I died, nobody would know. Hmm. Lord. And then she's praying. And now we're watching and saying, Oh God, just say thank you, Jesus. How foolish and how childish. They would say thank you. Thank you. Then sometimes when her voice begins to go dim, we know that tears is about to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But now I've been the greatest campaigner of that kind of prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. Sing with me. We are so blessed. And our souls have found rest. Oh, Lord. Is it all right if I pray and just speak over the congregation? Will that be fine? Hallelujah. Because every time we give thanks, we make room for more. Thanksgiving increases your capacity to receive so much. And within the minute or two that I have left, I just felt stirred in my heart to just pray and declare the blessing over someone. Perhaps there might be someone going through a health condition someone going through a very negative situation where you are trusting god for a miracle the church is where we find rest he says come unto me jesus is speaking all ye that are weary and heavy laden and he leaves you with an assurance that i will give you rest so whilst you are seated i want you to just receive this prayer let it be from the depth of your heart as i pray for you and it's in the name of jesus that we pray we give thanks, we're praying, because it's given, Jesus Christ. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. For us, give thanks. Father, in the name of Jesus, here at this beautiful assembly, in the presence of the pastor, the reverend, and the father over this assembly, I stand in faith agreeing with all those who are giving thanks. I pray that you accept our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. And then I pray for as many here who are trusting God. Listen to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God, if there be anything in your life that has been an impediment to your loving, serving, and praising Jesus, right now by the name that is above every other name, let that mountain be brought low right now. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every family here that has had a reason to cry this year. I speak to you. Let hope, 
let it rise Darkness trembles in your holy light I'm speaking words of hope No matter what it is Let hope, let it rise Darkness trembles in your holy light Every hopeless situation We turn it around for your good now in the name of jesus and let me declare over your life whatever the lord told you in january this year that is yet to come to pass by november and many of you are saying lord is this how i will end the year let me speak to you that it will end in praise in the name of jesus christ for some of you between now and the celebration of christmas you will return even though it is not thanksgiving you will create a thanksgiving moment because of the mighty hand of god in the name of jesus i pray for all the nobles within your church i decree and declare that it will be for you from glory to glory i pray for every family here represented the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from your tent in the name of jesus christ and i declare for those who are saying the year has not been good may that proverb be never be heard in your family again anyone here who is struggling with any medical condition you're having any blood disease you're having probably sugar diabetes struggling with cancer struggling with um, arthritis any kind of ailment in the name of jesus that name that is above every other name i declare that right here in this atmosphere of thanksgiving let that infirmity leave your body now same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that conquered the earth lives in me lives in me therefore everything that has not been planted by my father in your body right now i decree and declare in the name of jesus equa my tama hear me in the name that is above all names i declare let that sickness die now let it leave your body in the name of jesus for many of you you will return back this week and check yourselves and it will be a wonder they will tell you you do not have that sickness again in the name of jesus let me pray for everyone here trusting god for a job you have struggled you have done everything you know to do in the name of jesus standing upon the grace of our father here reverend in the name of jesus i declare before this year ends may the lord god whom you have served so graciously grant you a testimony and anyone here who is due promotion my bible says withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i declare you will hear good news even this week hallelujah i pray if i'm allowed to pray for all those who are involved in politics and governance i know that the church is rising to make a difference i decree and declare may the lord strengthen you for those who are in diplomatic services of all sorts i decree and declare may the grace of god rest upon you for mothers here whether expecting mothers or those who are still trusting god for the miracle of the fruit of the womb you will never forget this day because this is the day that your miracle begins in the name of jesus christ and if there is any family here that is under the plague and the cause of the spirit of death we agree as a church in the name of jesus oh grave where is your sting oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory we declare victory over death victory over the grave in the name of jesus let me say this as i wrap up i am aware very honorably so that this church is active beyond measure in missions and evangelism in fact sincerely 
I want to lend my voice to commend this church and to honor you and to appreciate you to let you know that your work and your service for the gospel even from far is heard and known I am amazed at the passion and the drive I we hear of your benevolence and your lavish giving towards missions and evangelism and like Apostle Paul prayed I declare my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus we pray for all the mission arms that this church is involved with in the name of Jesus Christ the fruits that your seeds and your giving is part of may those fruits abide no one here will give for missions and have your children go to hell in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for anyone here who is struggling in your relationship with Jesus I am an advocate of passion for the things of God I am an advocate of the fact that regardless of your achievement in this life if Jesus Christ please listen to me if Jesus Christ is not genuinely Lord of your life something is seriously missing and for as many who are saying apostle pray for me I desire restoration in my spiritual life I release my faith with reverence and I pray for you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate kato. Kate branda kata pa kato skoto breke te kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.